Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Herwig Juster and today we talk about another joining technique, the ultrasonic welding of thermoplastics. Okay, let us have a look at today's content. So we will start with an overview of the different welding techniques for plastics. Then we jump into the details of ultrasonic welding and the working principles, followed by the suitability of ultrasonic welding and we discuss the advantages, disadvantage, and I give you also an overview of the different joint types and we close with the application examples. Okay, let's briefly discuss the different welding techniques of plastics. So on the left we see here the, the type of heat input. This can be heat conduction, convection, radiation and friction. Um, in, the, in the last video on laser welding, which I have a link below. Um, we focused more on the uh, radiation as, as a type of heat input. And there are also, for example, the heat conduction. There we have the hot plate welding and with convection we have hot gas welding. And today we focus on friction as a, a major source of heat input. And there we can um, distinguish between inner friction and outer friction. And in the inner friction, there we have ultrasonic welding and outer friction, also called the high frequency welding. We have then the vibration welding. But today's focus is really on the ultrasonic welding using an inner friction of the macromolecules to generate heat. Okay, now we discuss the working principles. Um, here this video it's, it's a good representation um, thanks also to Hermann Ultrasonic Techniques for this representation so what you can see here is with the ultrasonic waves as an input um, we activate the macromolecules in your part they start to move and with this inner friction is generated and this in turn um, generates heat which melts the, the polymers and then allows the joining. So we have uh, as an input the different ultrasonic waves in different frequencies such as 20 kilohertz, 30, 35 or even 40 and the, the amplitudes uh, which are introduced in the layers are between 5 micrometers and 50 micrometers and here also to to have a good um, um, vibration uh, within the parts you need a special design of the components or of your tools and the the geometry the specific geometry which is used is always called the, the energy director because you need to somehow funnel the, the waves into a certain direction but then the basic principle is we use ultrasonic waves to activate the, the molecules uh, and they generate inner friction which results into heat and with this heat we can um, uh, cause the material to heat and then with the heating we bond the two parts together. Okay, so how does an ultrasonic device look like? So here's a, a schematic representation. So the heart of each uh, machine, ultrasonic welding machine, is the ultrasonic generator, which is coupled to a converter and a booster. And the, the application element is the sonotrode, uh, and which is then uh, applied onto the, the upper uh, polymer layer. And here we have the lower, and those two are, are melted then together we have also the fixture to, to mount this and since the sonotrode needs to have direct contact onto the upper layer we also need a pneumatic press to put some pressure on it um, to ensure that the waves are guided in to the right direction there. Okay, let's have a look in the, the, the working steps in detail. So we start, uh, we have our fixture, 
the, we insert the, the lower part and then the upper part. Then here we see schematically the sonotrode. Then in the next second step, the sonotrode gets in contact with the upper layer. Then we apply the, the pressure and start uh, introducing the, the ultrasonic waves, um, which then result in a this inner friction, so an activation of the molecules, the macromolecules, and then we need a certain melting time. It's it's not much. It's it's a fast process. Then we need to hold it because we need also to cool down that to to ensure that we do not lose then the uh, the the part dimensions also. And after this hollow the holding time, we retract the sun throat and have the 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 part welded together. Okay, now we have a look at the suitability of ultrasonic welding. So what we can what it is uh, mainly used for. So in the in the plastics industry in polymer engineering we use it to to join injection molded parts. This is a, a established uh, state of the art way. However, there are lots of other possibilities. For example, when you have membranes, you can embed them in a certain um, plastic frame and weld it, uh, especially for the um, medical application of membranes. It's really a clean process, the ultrasonic welding. We can also use other materials such as leather, non-woven materials or textiles and, and combine those together uh, and weld them. Or just different type of materials such as uh, um, welding a plastic with a, with a leather element for example. Or we can also insert different kind of uh, magnets or, or other uh, pushing parts. Uh, to, to have here, um, uh, to not have a, a two component molding, but then to insert this afterwards and weld it together. So it's a quite versatile uh, welding technique um, and allow not only plastic materials to, to be uh, welded, but also, also other materials. Okay, let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages. So as a major di disadvantage, the advantage is the it's the quick approach uh, of doing the thing. So it's a fast welding and quick drying time. We can easily uh, automate the the whole steps. Uh, we can produce a clean and precise joint, and have uh, clean welding sites itself. And we have no post processing steps involved. Also important is the, the low thermal impact on the materials itself. So it's just in, in a few seconds the, the welding is completed and have just this inner friction of the, of the parts. Disadvantages um, for the focus needs to be given at the joint design itself. So it's you, you need specially designed joints especially to have a proper tip contact during the welding. Then also there are some uh, joint size limitations um, in terms of parts what you can weld. And you also need to have some uh, first capital investment for the fixtures, uh, but also for the whole device itself. So this is what we also discussed in, in laser welding. Once um, this initial investments are completed, then it's a, it's a all over a cheap process. Yeah, and the, there is a, a restriction to the lab uh, joint types uh, you can you can fulfill. Okay, uh, important part of the uh, autosonomy is the other joint types. And this is what we discuss here now, give an overview of the of some of the joint types. So the most common used is the so-called step joint. And um, its uh, advantage is the easy implementation in the injection molding tool. And you see here uh, the, the base layer has here this step in. And here we place the upper layer. 
and uh, this step will be uh, by the use of the ultrasonic will be uh, molten and then uh, we have here this surface will then um, uh, attach to here to this straight surface then we can achieve here high strength and airtight welds and um, the, the advantage is also it has a self-centering function through this uh, shape and it's uh, well used also among the amorphous thermoplastics then we have the tongue and the groove joint so what you can see here in the base layer we have the, the U shape which is our um, uh, a groove and we see here again the, the little step which will be molten and then attach to the to the whole tongue uh, to the whole groove so this is the tongue and uh, among all the joint types here we can achieve the the greatest strength and um, also this gap results in a in a um, in, in some kind of capillary effect so it's really uh, soaks them the the melt in into this uh, uh, groove and this is also one of the reasons why this uh, greatest strength uh, of this weld is achieved through this capillary effect uh, then we have the so-called mesh mesh joint here we can achieve also um, um, uh, uh, airtight and high strength weld uh, also for um, thin thin walls uh, this joint is suitable and it is also um, often applied in firmer uh, semi-crystalline thermoplastics okay then there are several other i just list them here the double v joint spot welding swagging so there are there are uh, uh, in the literature different type of, of joints it's really established uh, these designs and what you can um, also deepen them okay let's finish with the application examples so here i've selected uh, four different industry for example electronics and electrical mm. so here you can um, join wired connections and also create connections in small delicate circuits this starts from mobile phones over computers or any other electrical or electronic device in aerospace and automotive here in automotive there are uh, the possibility to assemble larger uh, plastic and electrical components for example such as the door panels or instrument panels or also air ducts lamps um, front end lamp and uh, um, are a good example there are parts of the steering wheels and upholstery as well as engine components which you can um, uh, weld with this technique the medical industry what we also already touched on the this joint uh, weld uh, is not introducing any contaminations or degradation this is a major advantage uh, you want to, to to avoid to have here some contamination packaging industry here it is used to have multi-layer so different type of uh, of, of plastic layers uh, weld together to have um, uh, a protection towards um, air or, or other oxidizing things so to protect the, the food in the, in the food packaging okay more information on different polymer engineering topics can be found on my blog findoutaboutplastics.com and also i offer online courses in for polymer material selection i will link you both the blog and the online courses in the description below Okay, thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Till next time and bye.